Uh, I have a very nice vision about my country. A lot of hope, because uh, the way that I'm seeing the youth mobilize themselves, the way that I see that the population are more aware about what's going on down there, they're more involved in somehow. And I'm sure that they won't let politicians do whatever they want. They don't accept any more the lies and the promises that politicians are making during the camp electoral campaigns. And I have a lot of hope about Senegal. And I know that Senegal could be the, one of the, the leaders in, term, in terms of Senegal can lead, can be the vehicle of, uh, of, of, of uh, the first example in Africa as a country who emerged really in terms of uh, development social development, economic development. Politics, I don't believe really about it because I, I, I'm 100% sure that the type of politician that we have in Senegal, they can't handle anything. We need to recycle the, the cream of politicians that we have. Some of them are so old, some of them are young, but they are puppet of the Western countries like we do have now. The president of Senegal, he's a puppet of France, let's say that, like that. But in general, I have a lot of hope about my country, yeah. My mom introduced me to activism. Uh, I remember in 1987, she came home and go straight to her room. And I asked my sister, what did you do? She said, nothing. And I went to the room and joined my mom. And she said, hey, do you, what, I hey, what's going on? She said, do you know that uh, Blaise killed Thomas? I said, who is Blaise, who is Thomas? And then she explained to me about Blaise Kampaware and Thomas Sankara. And the next day I went to class and I was explaining about it and the, the students was interested. And the teacher, even him, was interested. And then I came back home and I asked what else I can know about those kind of details. She ex explained me about uh, apartheid, that there is somebody who called Mandela, he's in jail several years ago, blah, 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 he's still there. And then she introduced me to Amil Kalkabral. By the way, this is, that's why I'm, I'm wearing this mm -hmm. hat. She introduced me to Lumumba and all of that. So, Let's say that my mom who introduced me to that. But in some other, uh, on the other hand, the, the situation that I'm living in my country talked to me. The situation called me. The situation, uh, like, let's say, give me the feeling inside of me that I have to do something. And then that's why I'm involved in somehow in my country. Yeah. It depends on who, it depends on how. Some media, they are controlled by some people who manipulate real information in Africa. They're not showing the right information about Africa. What's, there is a Western fantasy to see Africans suffering, dying with the, uh, poor poverty, uh, war, and so. but they don't want to focus on who brings those war in Africa. I, ha I ever heard any African countries who created weapon you will see Kalashnikov from Russia. You will see Kalash AK-47 from France. You will see, uh, let's say, a uh, tank from US or from Germany or from any other countries, Western countries. But nobody asks themselves questions about that. You will see a lot of weapons from Israel, but nobody asks questions about where those weapons are coming from. People will talk about Boko Haram. They will talk about, yeah, Africa, they're they killing themselves. People don't talk about the resources that the West is stolen from our, um, our continent. Let's give just the last example, the little example of the Colton in Congo. There are young kids with the Kalashnikov, seven years old, killing people in the mine because of the Colton that these big companies, Chinese or other Western countries need. So there is a real, real, real big problem that the media don't focus really. The media follow the agenda of the G20 the agenda of a little group of a men who, who have their hand on the, on the world and decide what's going to be the issue tomorrow, what's going to be the issue today, and what's going to be the issue in one year coming. So that little group, I don't know who the hell they are, I don't know where the hell they meet, but that's the, that little group interest that the media will talk about every day. So their role is very important if they are telling the truth. But their role is nonsense if they are keep doing what they are doing. I'm not saying that's everybody. But in general, the mainstream media are failed 
because they show the world to the world only what is the interest of the little group who handle those media. That's a shame. It has to change. It's important, but it's not the most important. The protest has to happen in the street, not on Twitter, not on Facebook. Anybody can have like 20 profile in Facebook. Even the president can be part of the forum discussion in Facebook. But the thing is, we have to protest in the street. And Africa has Africa shown to the world a new way of protest since 2011. The, this process of democratization of our countries, we shown to the world how to mobilize, how to organize in nonviolent movement. The world is copying it. We saw no new debut in, in France. It's the same as Yanamar. We saw Podemos in Spain. It was the same as Yanamar or Ballet Citoyen. We saw in Black Lives Matter in the United States. But they don't want to assume that we copy this from Africa. Why? There is no shame. We could exchange with them strategies, how we mobilize, how we organize, how we interest people. We could do that. The world has to assume that this new Africa, this new generation of Africans, they are ready to handle the, the Africa by their own, with their own mind, their own feelings, their own agenda, their own opinion and point of view in terms of like, they want, um, let's say, uh, doctrine. We don't need socialism or capitalism and, or all of that. No, we need to, our own way of thinking in terms of politics because we have our own realities and Africans are ready. The youth of Africa are ready. They already show the example and they will keep going. I have a lot of hope about Africa. I have a lot of hope about this youth, this, this new generation, and we will end it up with this Africa Unite. And I hope so, and I believe it like hell, and I know it's gonna happen. Maybe I'm not gonna be here, who knows, but I know it's gonna happen.